So this is Stephen Chin at the Javaland Conference, and we're going to be doing night hacking interviews with different speakers and esteemed community members all today and tomorrow. And I am fortunate enough to be joined by Raphael Winterhalter. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Hi. Um, and we're going to chat a little bit about what you've been doing with Byte Buddy, um, Byte Code Introspection, all sorts of good stuff. And this should be a very geeky interview, I'm hoping. So that's why we. We have your laptop hooked up so we can project some stuff, um, and hopefully you'll have some fun stuff to play around with. Yeah, definitely. So um, where, where, do you, where, where are you from in, in Germany? I'm uh, from the area of Munich, approximately. OK, very yeah. cool. But I live and work in Oslo these days. So oh. I've been there for about two years now. How do you like Sweden? Uh, it's Norway, but Norway, I like it a lot. Norway, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no worries. <laughs> I make the jog a lot there, so that's a popular one. No, I like it a lot. It's uh, there's a really great uh, Java community there and a really very active user group. So, both personally, I like it a lot, and also professionally, there's a lot going on. Awesome. Yes, I have to go visit Oslo one of these days. Definitely. Um, so let me swap over to your screen so we can take a look at what's happening on your desktop. And it looks like you have some cool stuff going on there. Yeah, not so cool yet. So for so far, it's more or less. Uh, yeah, calculation hell world program. I uh, created a calculator class down here, yeah. which just takes an array of values and creates, uh, computes the sum and returns it. So we are doing this here, and um, yeah, then we print the result. And what I want to do now is I want to use um, yeah an open source framework that I develop. It's called ByteBuddy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's used for runtime code generation, and I want to use it to yeah more or less implement an aspect. So sounds, sounds good. Let's yeah. give it a try. Yeah, so um, what I want to do is just more or less, yeah, no, wait, change. Um, I no, create just an annotation and I call it log, right? So I just um, have something here and then I'll annotate this method um, with this annotation. And what I want to do is I want to uh, more or less intercept all calls to any yeah, method that is annotated and mm -hmm. want to log. Uh, the, the method call onto the screen. This is something, a yeah, very classic example of aspect-oriented programming, right? And normally um, you would hook up something like aspect J or you would have to register this calculator in a spring container, something like that to introduce this. But um, I hope at least uh, with my framework we can do much better. So what I am going to do is I um, want to use a Java agent, um, which is a, yeah, Less, lesser known feature of the hotspot virtual machine or any, any Java virtual machine, um, but it's a very powerful one and um, we can basically use it to um, do a lot of cool stuff. Um, our Java agent is more or less just a pre-main method, so it's, it's a convention, we call something a pre-main and we give it a string of arguments and we give it something that is called an instrumentation. Hmm. Um, it, an interface that um, the Java virtual machine implements for us and um, which allows us to hook into the class loading of any Java program. And, cool. Um, yeah, this is a standard feature, so you, you can use this without ByteBody, obviously. But normally, the problem with using this interface is that it gives you an array of bytes representing a class, and it wants you to transform this array of bytes into another class, which is a rather difficult task because we're dealing with compiled Java code here. So that's where ByteBuddy comes in. This is where ByteBuddy comes in, exactly. So what ByteBuddy allows you to do is uh, it allows you to um, define a so-called, um, sorry, the, it allows you to define an agent builder um, to do these things more easily. What we can do is we can just say, okay, we want to rebase um, a type, and let's just say for now any type, right? So mm -hmm. this is a simple lambda expression. We just we, we would have a type interface here, so we could say type get name, we can do this now as well, no, with get simple name, and we just say um, equals cal, cal, nah, life coding never works. <laughs> <laughs> so we just say, okay, the, the, the simple name is calculator, right? Just like this class here that we yep. defined here. And then we want to have transform it. So we can just say, okay, we give it a transformer. And this is, again, a, um, yeah, a functional interface. So you can use it with Java 8 as such. What we can do here is we just take a builder, and we say any method 
um, which, and this again is a lambda expression, any method that it, um, oops, get and declared annotations is annotation present. And when we say log class, so this is maybe difficult in presentation mode. I'll go out of presentation mode so we have a little, a little more readable. Room. Yeah, so for people on the stream, they're going to see the same resolution as your oh, okay. monitor. Right. Poor Michael's going to have more trouble. You, okay. you can get closer to the screen, Michael. <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, so now we see the full picture. So we say any, so right, we said, okay, any type where the type name equals calculator, do you want to transform, and then we want to take any method that is annotated with the log annotation, then we want to intercept it with a method delegation. This is a byte body concept. The method delegation is more or less, we want to go into any method call and we want mm -hmm. to redirect it to somewhere else. And for now, we just take our log aspect that we already defined here. Let's yep. format this. OK, we look into this right away. What we do, what have we here? We have one transform, oops, yeah. Install on, yeah. And then we want to install it on the instrumentation, oops. So, um, ByteBuddy works more or less with dependency injection, so you can just define any method on any class. So you can use Java Beans, but you can also use uh, static methods, which um, yeah, we will do here now. So we just say, okay, we want to intercept something, and we want to know the method that is intercepted. And with this method, we just want to do a simple logging. Just say method, whoops. Nope, Norwegian keyboard. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, um, method git name was called, right? Yep. And in order to tell ByteBuddy what we want here, we just say, yeah, we want the origin. So breaking this down, basically, again, we want to rebase any type named calculator as simple name. Then we want to transform this type to uh, have any method that is annotated with this log annotation, like some down here, to yep. be intercepted by um, a delegation of the method call to this log aspect. What ByteBuddy will do here, it will basically check the method and will find this method and uh, try to delegate it to a log aspect, finding three static methods here already. It will then, however, choose the one that fits best, um, okay. being the one that actually has some ByteBuddy semantics. Um, if there were several methods, it would choose the most specific one, very similar to how Java does method overloading, like the most specific parameters. Yeah, so do similar to method dispatch. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it, it binds it at creation time, okay. but um, since we're basically we're working on bytecode level here, and on bytecode level there is no overloading anymore. You have to define a target method, an yep. explicit one, but. Um, while basically uh, redefining the type, it will just look for a method that fits, more or less. It, it works rather reliably. The, the rules are written down in the Java doc of this method delegation. OK. OK, so far we just basically intercepted the method call. We didn't really call the original method. Um, so we still have to do that. And this is just doing by chaining. And what we want to do is we want to call the, the super method. All right. And this is more or less it. That's how you implement an aspect using ByteBuddy. It's yeah, five lines of code, fairly, and it is up to six lines of code. Cool. So this is Let's definitely, uh, that's the problem yet, because <laughs> we cannot, we have to attach an agent. Uh, you normally do that by putting it on um, yeah, the startup um, parameters mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the VM command. However, there's something called the attach API, which isn't really uh, suitable for production, but it really works well for unit testing. So. We do it here manually. We call the pre-main method. Okay. Normally, if you put a Java agent, then you don't need to put yeah, this. Then, then this pre-main method, it's more like the main method just for this agent. It's a separate yeah, line of code that is run before the actual program is run. But instead of putting something on your class path, you put it on yeah, this agent path. So we don't need, um, yeah, we don't need to um, put parameters on here. What we need to do is to, um, whoop, install um, an agent on the OpenJDK, giving us this instrumentation interface implementation, which is really the important part. Um, you can only get that via an agent. And on the OpenJDK, it works using the attached API, so now it should run. So let's try. I hope it works. Yeah, so someone's called. That's 
from the interceptor here. And yeah, the original result is still 45, so we didn't change the program. Of course we could uh, change the program. You can do a lot of weird things, uh, and your colleagues will hate you for that when you put an agent on the class <laughs> bar that just changes the behavior <laughs> of methods. So a method supposed to just be a getter returning foo suddenly returns bar. You can, it's a, it's yeah, a really actually, sharp Yeah, that's a good tool. question. So what do you think are the best uses of ByteBuddy? Um, what, what do you see your users? Yeah, I would say like cross-cutting concern, things that where you need so far to put on uh, really heavy containers like Spring or something, when you only want to do something simple, right? You, we just want to log method calls on instance level. Um, we don't want to drag in something really heavy. We don't want to change yeah. the build routine. We don't want to necessarily bring in aspect chain and the, like the heavy guns. We want to do something simple and then it should, there should be a simple way of do, doing that. And also the scale, so you can have several agents on, on, on startup and these will just be redefined step by step so we could additionally to this log annotation we could have a um, I don't know a security check annotation right and suddenly we have yeah so we could we could extract the annotation if this was not called log if this was called like um, secured right then we could just get here methods get annotation right and mm. secured Class, and then we could do something here with the annotation. Of course, then we would also have to define a retention policy that we can actually have it at runtime. The default being it only yeah, being compile. saved on the byte code level. Yeah. Uh, so byte body can access this, use reading the byte code yeah. uh, directly. But um, if you want to actually access this value at runtime, we can have that and then make here something like if user logged in, uh, just call the super method. Uh, otherwise, throw an exception. So for example, Instead of doing this explicitly all the time, we can just say, OK, intercept. We want to return something here. And then we just inject something that is called a super call. This is a uh, oh, actually, um, callable. <laughs> let me, let oh, me you put it on the screen again. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so now we just have this one here. What we additionally need to do is to tell ByteBuddy that it um, should since we return object here, right, instead of int, this doesn't work out, right? Mm. An object can't be uh, transformed to an int. So using runtime type, uh, ByteBuddy will attempt to cast the result that we get here. So we just return the super call, and um, we need to have the contract of the exception fulfilled, which works since Java bytecode doesn't know checked exceptions. So again, you can do really weird things here. You can throw a checked exception from a method that is declared as exception and will actually happen at runtime. Again, your colleagues won't like you for that, <laughs> but you can. So but we, what we could do now is we could say, OK, if this security check is valid, we call the super method, um, yeah, which okay. is the original implementation, They're like yeah, implementing this summing up of the values. If the security check fails, we can just throw an exception. Again, this would be 10 lines of code compared to strapping up an entire uh, container and you can actually since annotations are yeah no that's that's yeah. pretty cool yeah, and annotations if if a class loader cannot find an annotation uh, it will just ignore the annotation other than interfaces or like an entire framework so you can more or less put on the security check or off the security check on the class path and depending on uh, not on the class path on the agent part and depending on if the agent is there it will actually do the security check or in a test environment for example it will just not have it at all so it allows you to write more modular applications. Yeah, so like, um, since you're actually developing ByteBuddy, then you must actually do a lot of bytecode hacking yeah. to get all this stuff working. Yeah. So how do you, how do you like hacking JVM internals? Um, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> working, I mean, documentation could be better sometimes, while bytecode um, is fairly well documented. The Java spec is very precise. Um, once you get into it, it's actually really good that it is that precise. In the beginning, it might be a little bit frustrating. But um, I mean, bytecode is just scratching the surface. It's, it's bytecode is not really the bare metal. The JVM does so much to yeah. your bytecode. Um, on the do you use any frameworks that for manipulating the bytecode, or are you directly? Yeah, it, I'm based on ASM, like okay. the Open JDK itself, yeah. and everybody more or less, um, which is a really great framework. But it also allows you to write a lot of unsafe code. So it's really easy using ASM to to get these verify errors that you want to keep your code clean from. Okay, so that's what you get a lot of is fixing verifiers or yeah. you ever Java upgrades break ByteBuddy? 
Um, not so far, but I mean that's more or less a problem uh, always when working by code. While yeah. Java, the, the program language is, is compatible, um, so you can just go further um, on new releases. Um, when you actually manipulate that bytecode, sometimes changes happen that aren't that easily reflected in manipulation frameworks. Like, for example, when uh, the verifier was changed to not do inference anymore, but where you actually have to put stack map frames explicitly uh, oh. in the bytecode. That broke a lot of frameworks, and I still know <laughs> uh, that frameworks like CGLib or JavaSys, they still struggle with that, because they were written like in Java 1.1 times yeah. and a lot of things changed since then so it's not always easy to keep the APIs compatible. That's my luxury that I'm Byte Buddy is rather new so I don't have these problems yet but I'm pretty sure I will get yeah, there. Yeah and I noticed you're even using um, Lambda style interfaces like stream yeah. style interfaces for your um, yeah. API as well which is really clean and elegant. Yeah that was one of again. the intentions as well. Um, I'm cool. fortunate enough to have known that before I started working on, on ByteBody. I mean, it's, it's about a year old now, so I knew that Lambda expressions would be there. <laughs> um, that definitely is an advantage. Nice. All right. So that's a very exciting framework. I hope folks watching the program give ByteBody a try. Um, what, what website should they go to to find more uh, information about ByteBody? ByteBody.net or yeah. just ByteBody on GitHub. So either way, um, cool. they linked it together anyways. And um, you know, reach out to Raphael on his Twitter handle if you have any questions about it. So, thanks very much. Thanks for having for me for the short interview, and enjoy your time at Java Land. I will definitely.